So I was having coffee with my husband. I said, oh, I have an email from Alabama State Bar. I think this is the result. So we sat down beside each other and I clicked and there it was. My heart was something. All I hear was my heart. And then I was trying to read it, but everything was a blur to me. And I was telling my husband, can you please read it aloud for me? Because I don't think to understand anything I'm reading. And then he read it aloud, the whole thing. And then it sang to me when he said that your score is 306, 260. I knew, I passed, I passed. And then we both hugged each other and kneeled down and just say, oh my God, thank you, Lord. I feel the weight of that burden just got removed from my shoulder. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. We have a story today that's really unique. We have a first-time taker from the Philippines who took the UBE in Alabama, and she didn't just pass. She blew the exam up. Jane, welcome to the show. Congratulations. You must be feeling great. Thank you, Sir Jackson. I am blessed, and I am ecstatic. No kidding. You want to tell people what your score was on this exam? Three oh six. Is that great? Yeah, she asked, is that great? It's fabulous. <laughs> 260 would have been enough to pass. So you beat that score by 46 scale points. You could practice anywhere that will accept your credentials. Oh my goodness. I know people are going to say, how did you do that? So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and how you came to take the Alabama bar? Actually, it has been years of researching on how I can set up and become a lawyer in the United States, because as you've already said, I was a practicing attorney in the Philippines for 10 years. And then I got to also work internationally in Indonesia and help corporations, international corporations there with my law partner. And we did some appearances in the arbitration at the Singapore Arbitration Court. And then I will segue to Thailand and manage a multi-branch law office all over Thailand. And that's where I met a lot of uh, clients with concerns about interracial marriages and concerns about immigration. And then I fell in love and I came here <laughs> and joined my husband. So the goal was to me to, for me to have my practice here and at the same time stay in the United States. So I researched on how I can transfer my credits and my license in the Philippines. And it led me to the common jurisdiction, New York and California, which I was already qualified two years ago. It happened and it was very hard to get my requirements from the Philippines because of the lockdown. What I did, I said, I cannot do anything and I cannot go to school and I could not afford the Florida JD program. I joined the online LLM of University of Dayton and I finished last December. And then that's when I contacted you to set up and help me to prepare for the bar. But at that time, I was still set to take the New York because of the UBE exchange where you can transfer your scores all over. And then I realized maybe I could try to find out about Georgia and Alabama because I really didn't want to leave Florida where we are both are. And true enough, Alabama accommodated and allowed me to take the exam considering my Bachelor of Laws in the Philippines. So you sat in Alabama, but your score is transferable to a lot of places, including New York. So yes. you actually could get licensed in New York, can't you? It wow. works both ways. Yeah. Wow. It's so incredible. Now, Florida, of course, and California are their own strange circumstances. Yes. So that, that's a little different. But I know people are going to be really interested because you defied the odds here. It's, it's one thing to pass. It's one thing to have a score like you had, which was really top of the class. I've had a lot of people take this exam over the years. Very few get over 300 points. So you're really very special. And I want to talk about how you studied with us and the tools that you used and what you think made such a big difference to be able to come in and take this test first try and pass. I have emailed you. I appreciated that your program has this format where I can go on my own pace. And at the same time, it's very hands-on. It's not more on passive, but really active kind of studying for the bar exam. Because I realized that even though I finished my LLM, when I started doing some practice tests, 
the NCBE release practice test, I barely could give an answer that's what they need. So I said, I should be able to know this elephant of a bar exam so that I know how to approach it when the exam comes. And then I saw your video on YouTube. And for me, it's not just bar taking skills, but it, it's a life skill to be able to use your photo reading and mind mapping and then the paraliminals. That was got me interested to take bar review program. Yeah, let's talk about photo reading. You did use that tool. This is the the ability to read quickly, very quickly, and then mind map it, put it down in a visual context, and then activate it. Talk to me a little bit about photo reading, what that was like, and what difference you think it made. At first, I was very skeptical about it, just like any one of us who took your course. But when I started doing it, in fact, remember, I was keeping on asking you, are you doing it right? Because should I look at the middle of the book or should I look at the top of the screen or will my memory capture it the way I'm doing it? And all this pulling up the apple on your head. I, you said, whatever, however you do it, as long as you're focused on the book or the screen that you're looking at, just let your passive view do it. And so I did. So at first I said, it's not working, but the following days where... I get to go back to the materials that I photo read. I realized it made me remember the material faster and also the method of you telling us to look for this highlighted, look for this italics, you look for this underlined. Those are the keywords you will be able to use, especially during the MPT. And it did work. Yeah, I guess it did. It worked really well. And I, I think you're right that people are skeptical when they start. It doesn't seem like it works. And then you start to get questions right, and you're not quite sure how you knew it. You just knew it. Is that a good way to yes. describe it? Yes. Yeah. It's like the words are just popping out, and then it just catches your eye. Like when the when you read the questions, it just catches your eye, and then it just intuitively tells you this is the answer. Yeah, it, it's pretty extraordinary. And you use that tool. You also use the mind mapping. So you, that was a different way of taking notes, wasn't it? Yes. The thing about me is I could not memorize or I could not absorb a concept unless I see the bigger picture and how they relate to each other. It's like its rule and how they relate to each other. So the mind map helped me visualize and figure it out on my notes rather than just writing like a straight line of words i get to make circles and rectangles and connect them to each other like the general rule and then you connect them to the exception in another frame or triangle and then once you're in the thick of answering a question they pop up in your mind vividly rather than just remembering your notes on one plain note. Yeah, and I think that visual ability to see the relationships is particularly useful for a foreign trained attorney when you're in a subject like constitutional law or criminal law, right? Where it's like, yes. what are those, the, all these weird ideas coming out? What do I do with them? How do I connect them up? Was that helpful for you? I struggled with constitutional law because in the Philippines, we don't have the federal law concept. Right. Like we just want to have national law and then here, the federal law is different, and then it has to connect with the state law, and there are state law that should not overlap with the federal law. So it was very helpful to compose them using the mind mapping. Yeah. You also mentioned paraliminals, and for those that don't know, paraliminals are audio recordings that have separate tracks in the left and right ear that are designed to, to speak to the non-conscious and deal with particular blocks or issues that you might be having. Did you have favorite paraliminal recordings, anything that you relied on using? I did not. I just actually played the piece that you gave us. Every time, oh my God, I feel so saturated already, or I feel like I'm overwhelmed, or I feel like it doesn't make sense to me. I've been studying already and it doesn't stick to my mind. I could not seem to remember it. What I did, I would usually take a power nap in the middle of the day after a three-hour block of studying, then I would tell myself to take a nap and just play the paraliminals and fall asleep and then came back again more refreshed. And yeah. it makes your mind, I believe it makes your mind rest 
and at the same time digest all the materials that you were trying to read and understand before that. Yeah, I think they're really effective. I, I use paralimbals every day. You were in our basic success course, so you did not have personal coaching, but you attended a lot of the group coaching calls, I know. Can you talk a little bit about what group coaching was like and what value that presented for you? Actually, the group coaching was very instrumental in making my bar review preparation normalized because I get to share experiences with my fellow bar examinees. And then they share their experiences, their questions, their doubts, their struggles. And as you listen to your fellow reviewers, you try to tell yourself, this is normal. You're not alone. What you're experiencing is also what they experience. So there's nothing wrong about it. And we encourage each other. The good thing, though, is you and your team, you make us feel like you're, you're our family. Because, yes, we have our family, but they don't understand why we're so hyped up, why we're so worried that, oh, we missed that one question, why we're so worried that, oh, my God, I forgot that one element. So when we talk to you and you talk to us, it makes us feel like we belong. And you make us feel assured that one step at a time, learn from your mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes now rather than during the bar exam. So I think that's the value that the group calls give us. Yeah, one of the things I really liked about the way you approached your study, Jane, was that you were open to these new ideas and you took our suggestions and advice in group coaching and on the regular weekly sessions and you just employed them. And I know that there are a lot of attorneys from the Philippines that come to the U.S. that want to take the bar exam in different jurisdictions. And one of the hard things often is that willingness to set aside the way you learned at home and deal with yes. this new exam. Is that an accurate statement? It is true. It is true. The first time I consulted with you, I asked if you also had advised other Philippine lawyers because I was apprehensive, especially with the big box company, that they just dole out all these materials like a smogas board. And here we are left alone on how to filter them, prioritize them, and focus on the materials in a way that will give you the most points during the bar exam. But with you, you told us, and the way you structured your program, you serve it to us a la carte, like this is how you do the MEE, this is how you do the MBE, this is how you do the MPT, because they are tested this way. And I think it gave me a clearer picture of what the NCBE bar examiner is asking from us examinees. Yeah, and you obviously did understand it given your scores. I think people are going to be curious about how many hours a week you studied and for how long you studied leading up to the exam. I started studying sometime in March, and I'm also a working mom. I run my own, um, and I'm also a notary. I made sure that I start early and I did active studying every time I have the free time by myself. If I have three hour chunks of time in a day, I would make sure that I'm doing the mind mapping after I photo read them at night. And then I listen to your lectures when I'm up and about or doing some chores or doing some things that doesn't really need my full attention or when I'm driving. That way what I have read from my outline and I listen to your lecture, I associate all the concepts that you're discussing and I, I could picture the words in my outline. And then afterwards, I would mind map things that for me are really important. I think that method of doing it that way reinforces my knowledge and gets it ingrained in my brain. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. And I think that studying for a longer period of time, a little bit longer, and just fitting it in, right? You, you've got your family, you've got your work, you've got bar yeah. study, you've got all the things that come with being an adult and foreign trained attorney and all of the other responsibilities. It's really a lot to balance, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because life goes on and bar examination preparation is just one aspect of your 24-hour life. You can tell your three-year-old son to stop growing because, hey, I still have three months to prepare. You cannot tell your husband, so I'm not talking to you right now because I need to study. So I just tried to divide my 24 hours 
to at least give quality time to my husband and my son and a focus study so that, that when I'm done with my study, I can also focus on my work. So it's just a matter of competing at that moment and living the moment because you get spoiled so easily. It's the battle between the urgent and the important all the time. Oh, that's great. A battle between the urgent and the important. Tell me what it was like when the results came out, when you found out that you had passed. What what, what was that? Mama told us ahead that we might expect the bar result on September 29th. And in between, I was just keeping myself busy. I'm not trying to think about it because I got so worried because I got sick on the second day during the multiple choice exam. All I did was sneeze and blow my nose. And I had a headache, a bad headache in the back of my head the whole day of the multiple choice exam. So it freaked me out. And I said, oh my God, how am I going to pass it when it's 50% and I could not even remember what were the questions and what answers I gave during that day. So I kept praying and the day came. So I was having coffee with my husband. I said, oh, I have an email from Alabama State Bar. I think this is the result. So we sat down beside each other and I clicked and I logged it and there it was. It was a whole page. My heart was something. All I hear was my heart. And then I was trying to read it, but everything was a blur to me. And I was telling my husband, can you please read it, read it aloud for me? Because I don't seem to understand anything I'm reading. And then he read it aloud, the whole page. And then it sang to me when he said that your score is 300, my score is 306, 260, my new score, I passed, I passed. And then we both hugged each other and kneeled down and just say, oh my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel the weight of that burden just easily got removed from my shoulder. And we both got relieved because uh, my husband has been really instrumental in supporting me through this journey. Oh, that's wonderful. And just... To be clear to our audience, your multi-state score, you said you had a bad headache that day. It was a tough day. You scored a 150 in the multi-state. It's amazing, right? 130 would have been a passing score. Whew, that's pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah, and I said, like, what? And all of those scared that I would fail because of it. Yeah. So selective intuition works, huh? In photo reading. I think it did. I think yeah. what you've been assuring us, just choose the answer. Don't doubt yourself. As soon as you saw that, just jot it down. Don't change it. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. And your written score, day one score, was even better. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> basically a 156. For a foreign trained attorney, that is unreal. I, I've seen enough of these scores over the years to know that is just a phenomenal score. Very proud you must be. Oh, I, I was so relieved because remember during our preparation, I think up to the second week before the exam, I was still struggling. I was telling you, can you please help me? I don't know what to do with my M. I could not finish it for the love of God. No matter how I try, I could not finish it. And then you told me, just watch the video on how I did it. I literally followed what you did in our program where you have the MPT and how you did it. I just did it. And then I practiced and practiced every day before the bar exam for the whole two weeks. I did an MPT every day. And then true enough, it, it clicked. You said it's just going to click if you just follow those words, those italicized words, those highlighted words. And I thought to read the whole MPT question before I started answering it. Yeah. And then I tell you, I had 10 minutes before the end of time. I had finished it. I could not believe it. And I was doubting myself. Oh my God, did I do it, do it correctly? Because how come I have enough time and before struggling to finish it? Yeah, you, you finished it. <laughs> you finished it <laughs> quite well. I love these kinds of calls because you just took in and embraced everything and you worked so hard. And I know your family was thrilled. Your husband was thrilled and great opportunity. There are probably people watching this interview today who are foreign trained, maybe from the Philippines, but from somewhere else, what would you say to them about this process and how to prepare for the bar? Because obviously you had incredible success. Yes, I'm glad that you gave me this opportunity to also share my experience and hopefully inspire and encourage my fellow Filipino lawyers and also other foreign lawyers where they have struggled with the bar exam precisely because English is our second language. But I think the key is to expose ourselves to the actual sample exams 
of the CBE so that we get familiarized with the terminology and how they couch the question and how they expect you to answer. And there's no way you can go blindly during the bar exam if you expose yourself and you read and try to answer sample exam before you start answering during the bar exam itself. Yeah, I think that's great advice. What would you tell people about Celebration Bar Review? As you said, the score speaks for itself. When I consulted with you, that was really my fear that I would fail because of the multiple choice. The essay, although we our bar exam in the Philippines is also essay in English based, the way they expect us to deliver the answer in the essays is totally different from the way we answer in the Philippines. And your guide on how to structure the answer, I think is very helpful. And I, I would encourage whoever is taking your bar review program to follow that format because it's effective. It makes you answer in a concise way and at the same time in a comprehensive and substantial way without losing time and finishing on time and dishing it out, dishing it out the way the examiners are expecting you to answer. So my advice is, and I would encourage them to enroll in Celebration Bar Review because you treat examinees as human beings. We're not just those sheep that you should usher and just follow this, turn left, turn right, without even understanding why we're doing it. Because in your case, you explain why you should do this. You, you explain why photo reading would work. You explain why the parallel minus will help your subconscious mind. And your state of mind especially because I think going to the bar exam is all about your state of mind. That you prepared for it, that you know what they're asking for, and you're going to be able to deliver the way they want you to answer it. Jane, I really appreciate you sharing your story. Telling some of my friends that they should enroll in your program, and I explained to them why. I know that you've had great success in your career abroad, and now you're going to bring that success here to the U.S., and I'm glad love brought you to the U.S. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm also taking this opportunity to thank my, my, my sons, who have always been very supportive of me and my family and my friends whom without them i just wanted to share that taking the bar examination is a journey with our family and our friends this is not us alone it reminds me of that scene in the car movie where lightning mcqueen would just whoop, 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 and then he burnt out i associate my experience with lightning mcqueen where we need to stop somewhere along the way and just commune again with our family otherwise we're gonna burn out we cannot eradicate them in our lives during the bar review program because they're the main support system that we have and keeps us sane amidst all this scare and uncertainty that we're facing that no matter what we pass or not this is still gonna be there for us i've done this for a long time jane i'm not sure anyone has ever used lightning mcqueen as an example <laughs> i can tell you're the mother of a young child <laughs> you've been watching yeah. a lot of cars movies but that's a great <laughs> yes. example and and i think it's appropriate i know that your story will inspire so many people it will encourage so many and i'm really grateful that you would take the time and, and share it i know that our students are very excited for your success and and i know you've been a big part of our community group and i hope you'll continue to do that and we're just very proud and, and honored that we could be part of this journey i'm really looking forward to seeing what things you do going forward because i am, you're clearly I, am very successful. Privileged. Yeah. I am privileged that your team has been a part of my journey and i i thank god for that and I, all your advice, not just on the academic level, but also on the spiritual level, really helped me get through this. Thank you. I'm glad we could do that. And just to our audience, look, folks, you can do this. Jane did it, and she got one of the best scores I've ever seen. And you can, too. There's nothing that keeps you from it if you're willing to just jump in and do it. Thank you again, Jane. Our congratulations Thank to you. you and your family. And uh, we appreciate you being here. And, and to our audience, we'll see you again soon. And uh, thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.